Well, thank you, Annie and Tamara and all of our music folks, everyone making worship possible this morning. We continue our series on Daniel, and this morning we're looking at courage to confront. We are in Daniel chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. To the peoples, nations, and men of every language who live in all the world, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my palace, content and prosperous. I had a dream that made me afraid. As I was lying in the bed, the images and visions that passed through my mind terrified me. So I commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be brought before me to interpret the dream. When the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners came, I told them the dream, but they could not interpret it for me. Finally, Daniel came into my presence, and I told him the dream. He is called Belshazzar, after the name of my God and the spirit of holy gods in him. I said, Belshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of holy gods is with you, and no mystery is too difficult for you. Here's my dream. Interpret it for me. These are the visions I saw while lying in my bed. I looked, and there before me stood a tree in the middle of the land. Its height was enormous. The tree grew large and strong, and at its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was fruit for all. Under it the beasts of the field found shelter, and the birds of the air lived in its branches. From it every creature was fed." In the visions I saw while lying in my bed, I looked, and there before me was a messenger, a holy one coming down from heaven. He called in a loud voice, cut down the tree and trim off its branches, strip it of its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches. But let the stump and its roots, bound with iron and bronze, remain in the ground, in the grass of the field. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven and let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth. Let his mind be changed from that of a man, and let it be given the mind of an animal till seven times pass by for him. The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict, so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men, and gives them to anyone he wishes, and sets them from the lowliest of men. The Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we continue this series, Dare to Be a Daniel, this morning, We're looking at courage to confront. Well, in a little over a week, Halloween is here. Any fans of Halloween out there? Yeah, kind of let your inner your inner child loose or your children loose, as it may be. Uh, There's different ways of celebrating that, and of course, I love giving out treats. But you know, if you're a costume person, right, or you remember being a costume person as a kid, there's different ways to do that. You can maybe dress up as a superhero, right? So there's the superheroes out there. Uh, For my daughter was often a princess, so the favorite princess from Disney World. Or you can go the scary route, right? So I don't know if you dress up as monsters or skeletons or God, I don't know what all it is, but they come to my door and, uh, and sometimes it's a movie character. So I love all those kinds of things. I got to tell you, the least favorite of all of that are the scary characters that come. And I guess in a sense, that's ways of dealing with uh, our inner self, sometimes our inner fears, right? And so we think about that as we come into, you know, Halloween. So it's scary, but it's fun. Uh, I think it's a celebration, too, of just uh, of all that we can be, maybe. But uh, in any case, when you think about maybe uh, the time to be scared, times that are scary in our lives, I invite you into this story and the courage to confront. And so Nebuchadnezzar is actually giving his words, what he has written to the people throughout his nation and honestly throughout the world. And in this moment, he tells of a time that he had this dream, right? And, uh, and it's so amazing because Daniel is called, and you recall from the backdrop here that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are among more than 10,000 that have been taken away once their homeland was conquered to Babylon, which is the capital city of the kingdom of Babylon at that time. And King Nebuchadnezzar is the head of that. And the first reaction, once you're taken away captive like that, would be to rebel, 
But into that setting comes a letter from Jeremiah the prophet from home. And Jeremiah encourages them not to rebel, but to live and settle there. In other words, to make to build relationships rather than stir rebellion. He says, but you must keep strong values, to be salt and light in the world, to be a blessing to those around you, even though they are enemies, because God is at work even in their hearts and lives. And finally, to trust God that one day that God will bring them back and God will have done a work in their lives. And so into that moment, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it started with just small things like diet. Sometimes God uses the tiny test to build us for the bigger battles. And then there was a dream that Daniel interpreted, and he had to stand firm for that. And then there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before the fiery furnace, and they had to be unwilling to fall down. And they stood firm in all those tests. And now in this moment, Daniel goes before King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar has had this dream. He's explained it to all the other sort of astrologers and diviners in the kingdom, and no one could touch the dream or its meaning. And so he calls, he calls Daniel, the one he can trust. And he tells Daniel this dream, which is so interesting, of this tree that's so tall. It touches the sky. It's, it's prosperous. It's bountiful. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, it's cut down. It's a stump. And the animals flee, and everything trembles, and it's in shackles uh, for a season of seven seasons. And then Daniel comes before the king. And Daniel, in that moment, I suppose, has a, has a choice, as God has whispered through the Holy Spirit to Daniel the meaning of the dream. And Daniel decides to confront the king with a very, very hard truth. And so if you go on, the truth is this, that as Daniel looks to the king, he tells him the meaning of the dream. You can read it later. This is the meaning. And he tells King Nebuchadnezzar, he says, you are the tree. You are the tree that touches the sky. You are the tree that has grown grand. And all the peoples and all the nations of the world look to you. But he says, because of your pride, God is going to cut you down. God is going to cut you down. And God is going to make you like one of the animals of the field. You're going to lose your mind for seven seasons. But after seven seasons, if you look to God, God will restore you. Wow. You talk about courage. Now, the king, in an instant, could have had Daniel killed. That would be the reaction of most people who were monarchs at the time. But the king is humbled in that moment, but not humbled enough to change his life. And what happens as you read this incredible story? The king has this, like, I guess, like a Howard Hughes moment, right? You remember Howard Hughes? Only worse. <laughs> and the king, in, in about a year later, now how many knows that sometimes when God speaks the truth, it doesn't happen the next day? It's like a season that happens, right? And God was maybe giving King Nebuchadnezzar a chance to change his mind and to change his life, more importantly. But Nebuchadnezzar doesn't. And so about a year later, all of a sudden, the king loses his mind. And he was out in the field, we're told, eating grass like a cow, all right? Which is fine for cows, but not as good for people on all fours. And it happens for seven seasons. Now, uh, a lot of people think that's uh, about a year and three quarters, right, for our season. Other people say, no, it was seven years, but we don't know. So let's just say the shorter, uh, a little less than two years. And in that moment, somehow, uh, it's a humbling experience. How many have ever had a humbling experience in life besides me? Yeah, sometimes we have that. And, and I want to read what happens after that moment because the king, after having a meltdown, comes to a moment of faith, Right? And these are the words of King Nebuchadnezzar after that fall. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven, and my sanity was restored. This is verse 34 following. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and my splendor was returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and my nobles sought me out, and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven, because everything he does is right. And all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Powerful, powerful testimony from Nebuchadnezzar, 
the king of the greatest uh, kingdom that the world had known up to that point. And it reminds us that I think that pride cometh before a fall. But here's the words of hope. A fall can lead to faith. Pride cometh before a fall, but a fall can lead to faith. And in this moment, God has used Daniel as, again, salt and light in this world, where God has predicted that if they remain true to the course, that they can be a blessing to those around them. And so many people would not have heard the testimony, not just of Daniel, but at this moment in Nebuchadnezzar's life, had Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and others not remained true and faithful in life. It took such courage for Daniel to go before Nebuchadnezzar, who could easily had him killed and not speak truth, but Daniel was willing to confront truth with courage. And we need that in our own lives today. Wow. Now, maybe you're not in a moment that is as big as that, right, to go before a king or the president or anything else, but we need courage today, don't we? We need to have courage to stand up for for truth and justice and peace in our world. Uh, Around our world today, there's so many things happening. In our own country, we still have work to do for, for justice, and we need to stand up for that. And we need courage in our own lives, to courage to stand for, for what is right. And I love this passage that Annie read earlier that is so powerful that Paul writes in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. It's short, but I hope you don't dismiss a verse just because it's short, because this is so powerful. This is, this is life-changing. This is like a, a battle cry, if you will. Paul writes this, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. I'm going to tell you, that's got everything that you need right there, okay? Be on guard in your faith, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. So in this, Paul is saying, stand guard, and the word that he's using is used for like Roman sentries, right, who are on guard, or soldiers that are on guard. So stand guard like a, like a soldier, stand firm in the faith. He doubles down on that so you know that it's in the faith as well as in life. And then be courageous, soldier up, warrior up, if you will. Be courageous in life and be strong. That word kratos that we said before is like this word that is used throughout the ancient world for the Krakatoa, the great volcano, one of the greatest, uh, largest volcanoes in the entire world. Let everything be done in love. Karl Barth, the great theologian, said, courage is fear that said its prayers. Courage is fear that said its prayers. You know, God never said that we would never be afraid. God said that we can be courageous because God's spirit is with us. I love in Joshua chapter 1, when Moses has put upon Joshua the mantle of leadership and faith to uh, go into the promised land. And Moses has led the people through the wilderness because they're grumbling and a generation had to die off so a new generation could go forward. And then Moses has gone up to the mountaintop after he spoke to the people again, but he's left uh, Joshua with words of faith that God gave to him. And so Joshua hears the Holy Spirit speak those same words to him. And those words were, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous for the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. Wow. And I think the reason the Holy Spirit said that to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, is because he was afraid and discouraged, right? (laughs) Because all of us have moments when we're afraid and discouraged, if we're honest, right? But then those powerful words, right? Be courageous. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. But be courageous as you go forward in life. And I think in our own lives, we need that. It's so powerful today. Today, where do you need to be courageous? I think all of us need to be courageous as we look around our world today to stand up for, for peace and justice in our world. We are broken and heartbroken. The situation in the Middle East as uh, injustice was done. Certainly there's uh, injustices um, that have met, but to do the things that happened on October 7th is simply heartbreaking now to hope for peace and justice in our world there and also in the situation in Ukraine. But we have work to do in our own land as well. We still need to work more for justice and equality for all people in our nation today. There's so much room for for courage in our world. I think as parents today, 
It takes courage, doesn't it, to be a parent today, to look around and see all the things that are going on. A friend of mine has um, a painting that I, that I love, and the painting is entitled Warrior, right? And I don't know what images come to your mind in this moment, but here's the painting that is entitled Warrior. It's this baby that's in this um, bed, sleeping, and there's a father and mother praying over the baby, and it's entitled Warrior. And I think, you know what? That's right. We as parents, we sometimes do more on our knees than we do in any other moment in our life, praying for our kids. Now, it doesn't matter whether you have a baby or you have a grown child. They all need prayer, maybe more for grown children than for babies. So we have a baptism at the second service uh, this morning. And uh, in that moment where we dedicate and ask God's blessing for a baby, it's so beautiful. But you just think in a moment as I am up there, I always just sort of see this fast forward of what's happening to this child and all the things for the parent. But as a parent, we need to be courageous. As a grandparent, we need to be courageous. You can pray too. You can be a warrior in prayer. You can be a man or woman that's courageous in prayer, a mother or father or a grandmother or a grandfather, a warrior in prayer. And, uh, and so there's so much in our world today that needs courage. There's a great movie that came out some time ago entitled Courageous. I don't know if you saw it, but it's a great movie. You can re-see it. Based on a, on a true story, and it's about these group of fathers, but it could be, you know, mothers. It doesn't really matter, but it's a group of fathers. And, uh, and they have sort of a mix of relationship with their, their kids at different ages. And uh, at one point, <clears throat> one of the fathers loses his daughter in a tragic accident, and he's heartbroken. And, and these men are led to gather together and to pray and to read God's Word to find out what does it mean to be a man of faith. And uh, in that moment, they have this beautiful, I'm going to say it's sort of a prayer, and it's also a vow, if you will, and it's called the, uh, the Courageous Resolution. And this is what it says, and, and it is for fathers, but I want you to realize that it could be mothers as well. It doesn't really matter. And I have it in my morning devotions that I read at least once a week, and I think it's great. But it says this, I do solemnly resolve before God to take full responsibility for myself, my wife, and my children. I will love them, protect them, serve them, and teach them the word of God as the spiritual leader of my home. I will be faithful to my wife to love and honor her and be willing to lay down my life for her as Jesus Christ did for me. I will bless my children and teach them to love God with all of their hearts, all of their minds, and all of their strength. I will train them to honor authority and live responsibly. I will confront evil, pursue justice, and love mercy. I will pray for others and treat them with kindness, respect, and compassion. I will work diligently and to provide for the needs of my family. I will forgive those who have wronged me and reconcile with those I have wronged. I will learn from my mistakes, repent of my sins, and walk with integrity as a man answerable to God. I will seek to honor God, be faithful to his church, obey his word, and do his will. I will courageously work with the strength God provides to fulfill this resolution for the rest of my life and for God's glory. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Wow. Something I pray and read and try to promise that I'll live that way each and every week. But I think that for all of us, there's so much need for courage to live rightly in our world today. So whatever challenges you face, know this, that it does take courage, but God has promised us courage. God has promised that he'll be with us, even as at the end of Joshua's life, in that moment he's crossing the river, God promised to be with him. Joshua, at the end of his career, the end of his life, stands up before the people and challenges them to continue to go forward with the Lord, and then says those words that that ends with, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Today, whatever challenges we face internationally, nationally, right at home, know that it does take courage to stand up for what is right. But God has promised us the courage and strength to do exactly with that when we lean on his strength. Amen? Amen. We join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the story. 
of Daniel and how you worked through Daniel and how he had the courage to confront those in power. But through all that, you work for your glory. We thank you that as we live our lives today, we are confronted with situations that take courage. Courage to stand for what is right. Courage to confront that which is wrong. Whether it's in our world, whether it's in our nation, our community, or our home. But we are so thankful that your Holy Spirit empowers us to be men and women that live and stand for what is right through the courage given the Holy Spirit. We pray this in Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.